put them in the innermost cell and secured their feet to a stake. About midnight, while Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God as the prisoners listened, there was suddenly such a severe earthquake that the foundations of the jail shook. All the doors flew open and the chains of all were pulled loose. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself thinking that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted out in a loud voice, Do no harm to yourself. We are all here. He asked for a light and rushed in, and trembling with fear, he fell down before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you and your household will be saved. So they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to everyone in his house. He took them in at that hour of the night and bathed their wounds. Then he and all his family were baptized at once. He brought them into his house and provided a meal, and with his household rejoiced at having come to faith in God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. Your right hand saves me, O Lord. Your right hand saves me, O Lord. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with all my heart, for you have heard the words of my mouth. In the presence of the angels, I will sing your praise. I will worship at your holy temple and give thanks to your name. Your right hand saves me, O Lord. Because of your kindness and your truth, you have made great above all things your name and your promise. When I called, you answered me. You built up strength within me. Your right hand saves me, O Lord. Your right hand saves me. The Lord will complete what he has done for me. Your kindness, O Lord, endures forever. Forsake not the work of your hands. Your right hand saves me, O Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. I will send out to you the spirit of truth, says the Lord. He will guide you to all truth. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Now I am going to the one who sent me, and not one of you asks me, Where are you going? But because I told you this, Grief has filled your hearts. But I tell you the truth, it is better for you that I go. 
For if I do not go, the Advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world in regard to sin and righteousness and condemnation. Sin because they do not believe in me. Righteousness because I am going to the Father and you will no longer see me. Condemnation because the ruler of this world has been condemned. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When I was uh, in uh, high school, middle school, high school, um, I was a big fan of mathematics. It's one of my favorite subject matters. I was very good at it. And it was one of those things that as I would go to class, I could just intuit the lesson. Like, as soon as the teacher would put something up on the board, like it made sense to me. And I know that that's not true for everybody. I had some friends that very much struggled in math, and I, I had to help tutor them. Um, and I struggled in other subjects, but math was my uh, expertise. And I remember specifically learning about uh, the number I, the imaginary number I, which represents the square root of negative one. I remember that idea was just mind-blowing to me, that mathematicians could just make up numbers to make their formulas work, that even though there was no such thing as a square root of negative one, it can't happen, it's impossibility, they were able to create an imaginary number that could further the advance of mathematics, that could then start building other things on top of that foundation. And, and I began to realize as I, as I learned about that and other things in mathematics, how that idea only makes sense if you know what the negative one is. You know, if, if you don't have an idea of what negative numbers are, you have no idea what negative one means. And I had to know what square roots meant. You know, that it's square root, it's a multiple of itself, and with the square root of negative one, there are no two numbers that you could multiply together to get negative one that are the same, so it's an impossibility. And that led to other things in mathematics, like one thing built upon the other. And when you think about it, that's basically how education works, right? Like you go to school, and, and they start you on the most basic fundamental levels, and then slowly they work their way up. If you're learning anything new, they have to start the rudimentary, and then build from there. And over the course of time and energy, we get a chance to experience wonderful and amazing things about this universe of ours because we have grown our understanding of them. Now what's amazing is that's not just true for mathematics, it's not just true for education, it's also true for our God. And we see that played out in the way Scripture is laid out, right? Like we start with the Old Testament and, and when God saw that we had fallen in the book of Genesis, when Adam and Eve fell from grace, I, I just imagine his eyes rolling in his head, and he was just like, ah, oh, now we're going to go through the long and arduous process of revealing ourselves the Trinity to the human race. Because he knew if we just like showed up on the scene, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, it, it wouldn't make sense to us. It would be something that it would be so overwhelming and just so much all at once that humanity would just sit there and be like, we don't know what this is. We, we have lost our connection to the Trinity and God. So he spent the entire Old Testament as, as God the Father, revealing himself as the Father. And we, we get an understanding of who that God is and how he interacted with us through the prophets. And then when the time was right, when it was the perfect time, the fullness of time, he sends us his son. Of course, we celebrate that at Christmas. And then at the end of Jesus' time amongst us, and that's what we hear in today's gospel, he says to us, it is better that I go away from you so that you can have the advocate, the Holy Spirit. Because you're ready for it now. Like, I've been amongst you now for 33 years, three years of which I've been giving you instruction and teaching you about the faith. Now you can understand and fully appreciate what the Holy Spirit is for you. At some level, I think this is even true in our lifetime, right? Like I think about when I was a kid going to CCD in elementary or religious net school, like you would learn about God the Father first, right? You learned about his love for you. And then you got ready for first communion. You learned more about Christ and what he was giving you. And then you got ready for confirmation and receive the Holy Spirit. We were meant to come to groups with all three persons of the Trinity, but there's a, 
there's a good way to go about that. And we slowly get there by this gradual building up from one thing to the next. And so for us, then, everything's connected. All these sacraments are connected. And it's so good that we can be here and receive our Lord Jesus Christ once again, hoping and praying that the Holy Spirit fills us now that we may go out into the world and continue the mission of Christ. And so let us be like the apostles. Let us listen to that word. Let us let the Spirit fill us and motivate us. That we do not have a spirit of fear, but one of fearlessness and truth. Amen. Amen. Let us now stand. And as we've been doing, we will continue to do. Let us pray to the Lady of Guadalupe. Queen of the Angels and Mother of the Americas, we fly to you today as your beloved children. We ask you to intercede for us with your Son as you did at the wedding in Cana. Pray for us, loving Mother, and gain for our nation and world and for all our families and loved ones the protection of your holy angels that we may be spared the worst of this illness. For those already afflicted, we ask you to obtain the grace of healing and deliverance. Hear the cries of those who are vulnerable and fearful Wipe away their tears and help them to trust. In this time of trial and testing, teach all of us in the church to love one another and to be patient and kind. Help us bring the peace of Jesus to our land and to our hearts. We come to you with confidence, knowing that you truly are our compassionate mother, the help of the sick, and the cause of our joy. Shelter us under the mantle of your protection. Keep us in the embrace of your arms. Help us always to know the love of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. My dear sisters and brothers, as a loving response to God's love for us, we have the courage to go to our God with the needs of many lives, including our own. So let us pray for Francis, our Pope, and all who minister in and to the Church. May they reveal the love of God in their humble and dedicated service to God's people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of governments, they recognize and accept God's spirit of justice and peace as an essential good for all people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our world, may we all work together to overcome COVID-19. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are worried or depressed, may they find strength and be comforted by the love of the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who serve in the military and their families who await their safe return, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the sick, suffering, and their caregivers, uh, that they may find healing and solace to God's, uh, in God's providential care, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all those who have died or who will die this day, in a special way today we remember Michael Fowler, for whom this Mass is being offered, that they may join all the angels and saints in the kingdom of heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For those intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts, in a special way, let us pray for all those who could not join us today for this Mass. We pray to the Lord. Lord Faithful God, who loves us in Christ Jesus, send your spirit of truth to dwell within us that we may always reject what is false, live by the commands of Christ, and be true to the love you have shown us. Grant us through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who is the resurrection and the life, and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread and offering, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It has become for us the bread of life. 
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise of the Lord in his name, for our good and the of the Church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously. In Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising, the life of all that is risen. Therefore, overcome the past of joy, every man, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers of the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of us, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you, and give it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for me for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, 
As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Charles our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously and peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Be power and glory of yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant their peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. So, if you have an opening to the center aisle, uh, if you could take that and then come forward in a single line, we have a table on the floor uh, to indicate six feet of distance for social distancing. If your pew opens to the outside, uh, if you could make your way uh, back and around to the middle section, you cut into the center and then come up the center aisle and then back to your pews. Uh, that would be great. For those who are entering to the center, you'll have to come all the way around to get back to your pews. Uh, it's not ideal. You're kind of experimenting. So we're going to see how this goes uh, with distributing the news. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my heart, but only say the word, and my soul shall be. Those of you who are watching from home, we ask that you make an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacraments. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you to my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Jesus, 
I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Hear, O Lord, our prayers, that this most holy exchange by which you have redeemed us may bring your help in this present life and ensure for us eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, just a reminder that uh, we will have Mass here again tomorrow at uh, 9 a.m. Um, and we also have confessions tomorrow evening uh, here in the confessional at 5.30, if you will be attending that, uh, to only use the screen, again, as a protective barrier, and that goes for, obviously, here uh, and over at St. Mark Mary's. Uh, and then on the weekend, we'll have our normal uh, liturgy schedule, uh, both for confessions and for Mass. Um, and if anybody would like to stick around after this Mass, but with uh, cleaning the, the pews up the news and the doors, uh, that would use uh, Steve Eilbrock will be coming over with some supplies uh, to help with that. Uh, no obligation to stay if you'd like to. I'd uh, be greatly appreciated. The Lord be with you. Amen. Now, mighty God, bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forward, the Mass is ended. Have a great day, everybody.